Okay. So in KW Command, we have something called Smart Plans, which are actually a really great way to um, kind of utilize for your business. So what are they? This is their little Keller Williams definition. So basically, they are a tool that help automate listing checklists, marketing touch points, drip campaigns, and more. Um, so you can take the guesswork out of communications with clients and leads. So smart plans can be something that simply just reminds you to do something. Um, they can help get you in touch with people. So you can do stuff as send automatic text, automatic emails, and really map out a way to keep in contact with your people. Um, what I'm kind of going to focus on today are the pre-built plans, um, because this is really the easiest way to get started. And I am going to talk about a few that are specifically in there, but these just give you a place to start. So really you can get up and running quickly, or you do have the ability to create plans from scratch to reflect the way that you do business. Um, my biggest recommendation with smart plans is to find one that's pre-built that you like, even if you don't necessarily like the content in it, but just find one that you like the rate that they are sending out to your people. And that way you can, you know, you already have something that's pre-built and then you can just change the text and everything to something that you would more prefer. Um, I have this blog. I'm actually going to leave this link. Let me see if I can get it in here. I'm going to leave this link in the comments because this is one, it's very short, it's pretty easy, and it talks about um, certain aspects of smart plans. Let me see what is happening. Okay, and I am going to just open it up and kind of show you. So this was written as a review of KW Command Smart Plans, um, and it just explains what they are. And I think some of this are, is in my slides, but when we get to the templates part, these are kind of a few things that you can do to look at to see if they would be good for you. I'll show you these more when we're actually in command so you can kind of see what it looks like on that side. Um, and then these are the preloaded smart plans in KW command already. So I'm gonna focus on two of those today, but that way you can just see the definition of all of them. Um, you do have the option to build custom smart plans. You have seven actions that you can choose from. So this explains all seven of those actions. So it's a really good little um, article to keep on hand. We'll kind of reference back and forth to this. But first, I really just wanna talk about how to get started with smart plans. Um, smart plans are super easy, but there are a few things that you kind of just wanna keep track of before and make sure they're really good to go before you get started with smart plans. So step number one is going to be upload your contacts into command and input as many details as possible. Um, unfortunately, sorry, coming in, sorry, I'm already started. Oh, no, you're back. I forgot those for a while, those. No one's in here. <laughs> I guess I'm on Zoom. Oh, okay. Get that up and running. Waiting for that to come up. Okay, so just upload your contacts into command and make and put as many details as possible. Meaning you want to have at least a phone number, an email address. If you know their neighborhood information, I would recommend putting that. And I definitely recommend using tags because when we go into the Smart Plans library and see what all um, are in there, you have certain ones that you can use for just buyers, first-time buyers, sellers, anything like that. And having those tags, just so you know kind of who's who in your contacts really makes it easy. If you're using the neighborhood nurtures, you have to have either an address or a neighborhood. I can go into um, my contact card in a minute and show you what it looks like, but mine is based off of a few things. It's based off of my exact address, so I can see what listings are coming up in my area, or I have multiple neighborhoods put in, so I can see you know, maybe, maybe areas that I'm interested in. Um, so like I said, use customized tags. It just kind of helps you in the long run. And then assign a smart plan to your contacts. Activate Twilio if you're choosing to use it. So Twilio is something that you can pay for separately and it allows you to send text messages automatically through smart plans. And then double check that your command email address is correct. So I will show you in a second where that is. But over here on the right side, I have the Twilio pricing. I'll show you where you can get to that. 
but the cheapest one is up to 300 credits and it's $3.16 a month. So it's pretty affordable. Um, the downfalls of Twilio, it doesn't come from your number. So you would have, have to introduce it as kind of your business phone number. But the fact that it can do the text messages automatically for you really does have its perks. So I'm gonna open a command and just kind of show what all I was talking about in there. So first thing, upload your contacts into command and then put as many details as possible. That's of course in your contacts applet. Um, I'm gonna talk about Twilio. So we'll hit Twilio and the your command email address first. I'm gonna drop down and go into my settings because both, both of those things are found in there. Okay, so in my settings, I'm going to scroll down more towards the bottom. And Twilio should be one of the last things that you see. So you can see right now I'm not subscribed. So if it's something that you are looking into, you just need to go into subscribe and marketplace and basically just go in, choose what um, pricing you would like, and then just subscribe and it will assign you a phone number. So it says starting in 316 month. It is under maintenance at this time. So just keep an eye on it. If this is something that you want to do, it should be up and running. But those prices, that is where I pulled it from. So you can see. Um, and it gives you a breakdown too, because just because it's a credit doesn't necessarily mean it's a text message. So you can send or receive between 100 to 300 per month with the smallest one to 316. And they do bank credits. So if you don't use all 300 this month, they will roll over into next month. It's kind of just a good option. Um, and then when I mentioned double check that your command email address is correct, because whatever they, if they get an email for, um, from you from a smart plan and they reply to it, this is the one it's going to go to. So command email, you just want to hit manage and then make sure that your reply to email is what you want. You can drop down and change. Um, you can add a custom one if you want, but just make sure that this is a good one for you. Um, okay, let's talk about the neighborhood nurtures. So this is by far my favorite smart plan. I think this is the most beneficial. Um, it's the easiest one and it's kind of, it's a good way to get started to kind of get the most bang for your buck. Um, and what this one does, there are two. So there's monthly and bi-weekly, just depends how often you want the messages sent out. Um, but it allows you to send messages twice a week or once a month to active leads interested in properties within a specific zip code or neighborhood. It doesn't just have to be for buyers. If you have a potential seller, you can send them um, based on kind of their area so they can see what is popping up for sale and kind of see what the pricing is like. So I have myself set up on one of these and I just forwarded it to my KW email, but I'm on the bi-weekly plan. I would recommend adding you know, your address in and add yourself to this plan just so you can see. So I get this every two weeks. Um, this one's a little bit older. I guess I didn't send the most recent one, but this one is from September 27th. So whatever I look at, this is true for this period. So I have some Charlotte ones added in mine. So you're not just limited to Fayetteville. You can get stuff from other MLSs. So if I scroll down, one of mine is Oakmont Park. So that's in Charlotte. At this time, there was one home for sale. and It'll show you the average home price and the average sold price. Um, I have Longleaf added as a neighborhood, so I can explore that one if I want. And then once again, University Park, Charlotte. Um, and I can see more, and you can see that it is branded to me. I can download my app from here, and it has all that good info. So if I, as a consumer, want to play around with this, let's open this up, Lawn Park, I would click Explore Neighborhood. And this is specific to me. So all of these up here are neighborhoods that I've added myself. 
um, or I've added to my contact card, your consumer does have the ability to add their own neighborhood if they want. So they're not limited to whatever you want. I don't know why it's suggesting Canada to me, but okay. And then from here, so at this time in September, these were the houses that were listed for sale um, when this was out. So 1830 Benton Street, if I really think that I want more info on that, I can open it up. I can see everything that's in the MLS for this property. So I can see all 23 images. I looked at this house earlier. It's really cute. $350 or $50,000. That's pretty, that's kind of what you're going to get in Charlotte. Um, I can see it's two bed, two bath. It's a little bit more than a thousand square feet. This is the neighborhood that it's in. Um, and then this is basically the details area of the MLS. I can see, okay, if I really want to live here, how long is it going to take me to get to work? I can do that. Facts about the home. Facts about the neighborhood that it's in. Um, nearby schools. I can even calculate maybe what my mortgage payment would be. And then I can contact my agent down here at the bottom. So I can do that for any of the houses that are coming through uh, my neighborhood snapshot. If I want something more Fayetteville, let's see what all the same gates for. So there's a few available there. Same thing, if I'm interested in this house, I can click on it and see all of the information that's on the MLS. And then I think maybe my most favorite part about this, let me close out some of these tabs, sorry. When I go back into command, I'm gonna pop into my contacts and I'm going to open mine. So you can see over here on the right, sorry, it's really small, that I was looking at the neighborhood gates four at, on 10, 16, or 10, 16 a.m. on 10, 20. You can see the exact listing that I looked at, and you can kind of see what all I'm looking at. So this is a good way to get in contact with people. You know, I was viewing listing 1830 Benton Street maybe get in contact with them and see if that's something that they're interested in. It gives you a good excuse to talk to your people. Um, I can see when this went out. I know a question is gonna be, are you, you know, does it notify you when stuff like this goes out? Unfortunately, it does not. But if you know that this one went out October 11th, you know that the next one will be out two weeks from then. So it makes it pretty easy to keep track of. And then what you're looking for in this one with more, most smart plans at the bare minimum, you just need name, phone number, and email address. This one's a little bit different because you do need these neighborhoods. So my primary neighborhood is in here based on my actual address. And then I've also added these in myself. So I can add in basically whatever neighborhood I want. If you know what it's called, search it, or you can find it in map. So if I, I lived at the office. The office, you know, this is a business area, so it's not going to have an exact neighborhood, but I have all of these right around it that I can choose from. So Van Story Hill, South Lockwood Park, um, whatever that is, Forest Lake. I can pick and choose whichever ones that I want, and then I can save these and add them to their neighborhood nurture. So this is good because if you don't know their exact address, Pick and choose some of the more popular neighborhoods in Fayetteville that you know listings are always coming in and out of, and you can still add them to these neighborhood nurtures. It doesn't have to be specific to them, but that way they're still getting that email and they're still getting your info and they can still go in and explore. And then um, they can add these neighborhoods for themselves if maybe what you've added isn't exactly what they want. So that's my favorite smart plan. Um, whether you're doing monthly or bi-weekly, I would recommend going into your contact card, adding your neighborhood, add a few other neighborhoods, and just add yourself to this plan so you can kind of see what it's like. Um, questions about that. That one's a little bit, it seems a lot harder than it is, but really it's just going in, adding them, adding their neighborhoods, and then going from there. And then when I get a little farther, of course, we'll show you how to add them into the smart plan. Um, but any questions on kind of the specifics? Okay. Next one I'm going to talk about the quarterly call plan. So this one is probably the most basic one, but I think this one is very beneficial just on the fact that you just add them once 
And all it does is it reminds you to give them a call every 90 days. So anytime you log into command and you have a task due from a smart plan, it will show up right here. So if today is um, October 20th, if I was set to call one of my clients, it would be here. So I would call them, just talk, doesn't have to be about real estate, get off the phone, mark that task as complete. And then in 90 days, the same thing's gonna happen. I'm gonna log into command. I'm gonna have a task to give them a call. And um, just to kind of talk about it. So today's October 20th. If you call 10 people in your database today, and then three months from now, which will be January 20th, how many changes do you think would have happened in their lives? Usually a lot. Um, I always give the example of, you know, from February 2020 to 90 days after that, how much do people's lives change? You are probably going to have something to talk about, and it doesn't have to be real estate. It's just a good time to touch base with your people, maintain that emotional proximity, you know, maintain find out what is happening in their lives, find out what has changed. And, you know, it is kind of a good time to remind them, hey, I am in real estate if you ever need somebody. Um, that's kind of why I like this one. It's really basic, but I think this really does the job. Smart plans do not have to be complicated in order to be effective. And I think that's kind of my favorite thing about them. Um, Okay, let's talk about, I'm going to go back into command and I'm just going to go into the smart plans applet so we can kind of talk about a few things in here. So if you first get in here, what it's going to show first are your smart plans. This is your first time in here. You're not going to have 38 like I do. Um, you probably will never ever need 38. I just add a few. There's a few that I've kind of made myself. Um, I'm going to close that. You can kind of see what it looks like. You want to see if you have um, somebody on smart plans, you'll need to look for this, the contacts, however many you have here, that means how many are active on the plan. So I can click this eye and I can see that I'm the only one on my smart plan. So if I wanted to unsubscribe myself, this is where you would do it for whoever is on the plan. Um, you do have the ability to create your own. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But if you want to utilize things like the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture or the quarterly call plan, you're going to want to go into the library. And up here, so there's kind of, there's a lot in here. So let's just take a minute. Um, you will see what are featured. So there are nine featured ones. The Keller Williams 10. So these are the 10 default ones that came equipped with smart plans. Um, so that article that I put in contact or not in contacts in chat that was talking about what each, um, I'll open it back up, but like what, um, the preloaded smart plans. So these preloaded smart plans, those are going to be the Keller Williams 10. Let me get back in what I was in. This is where the neighborhood nurture, um, both of them, as well as the quarterly call plan are. So if you wanted to use this bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, you first have to add it into your smart plans. You only have to do that once. To do that, you're just going to click add smart plan. You're going to see smart plan must be unique in your library. I already have it in mine, but you shouldn't if this is your first time and you'll hit download. And then from there, every time you go into your smart plans, it should automatically be in there. So you go through those steps anytime you want to add in a new smart plan from the library. The quarterly call plan will also be under these 10. Same thing, you'll click add smart plan. Um, you can rename it if you want, or you can leave it as that and you will download. The cool thing about all of these, it, it all gives you a description. It'll tell you when it was published, um, how many downloads, it'll give you a rating. And then you can also view the steps. So you can see that this one, it lasts 91 days. There are three steps total and there's only one touch. So your steps will be call um, contact name first, their contact first name, last name as part of the quarterly call plan. There's a delay of 90 days in which nothing happens. And then it restarts unlimited times. So on day 91, it goes back to this phone call. Another 90 days goes by and then it just keeps repeating. Um, 
the neighborhood nurture is going to look very similar. It's going to send an email. It's going to be a delay of 14 days or 30, depending on which one you choose, and it's going to keep repeating. I've been on that plan for almost two years now, um, pretty much as soon, like since it started, I've been on it. And then monthly neighborhood nurture, so we'll look at that one. There's a delay of 30 days, but it's the same steps. Um, if that is something you want to add somebody to, you would just need to go back to your smart plans, look for, and then you have these action buttons over here. So I would add contact and it is going to give me my entire contact database. When I was talking about it's a good reason or a good thing to do to use tags, it's because you can filter through these. So if I was wanting to, to send this to the Dogwood group, there are my people on it. It's kind of just a good way to further um, like narrow down your smart plans. You'll see on these, these with zero neighborhoods, those are probably ones you don't want to add to the smart plan because they're not going to get anything from that. But if I look for myself, I have 24 neighborhoods. So I would check myself. From there, I would add to smart plan. And then the cool thing with smart plans, you have the option to start now or you can start on the following date. And then if I go back, let me go back. Come on. If I'm adding a lot of people at a time, I believe I have 10 set right now. Okay, so I'm missing neighborhoods. I'll show you on a different one. Um, you do have the option to stagger start them. Then. So if you're adding 50 people to your quarterly call plan today, you can set it up that it adds five people at, at a time. Um, but from there, you'll add them. Let me see if it'll let me re-add myself. Confirm. So it's been submitted. So now I can see I have one contact on it. And then from here, I will start getting the neighborhood nurtures. As long as you have those neighborhoods in there, there's not really anything else specific you need to do. For something like the quarterly call plan, let me open that up. I'm going to select all. I have 10 selected right now. So I'm going to add to smart plan. I'm missing a phone number. So you need a phone number for those. Let me get some people in here that I know have phone numbers. Okay, I'm going to select all. And then this is the stagger start over. So this just allows me to kind of distribute when it starts. So even though I'm adding 20 contacts, I might not want to call 20 people a day. So I can choose this option and I can say, you know, the maximum I'm okay with calling per day is five. So I would just bump that up. And then it's going to give me five today, five tomorrow, five the next day, and then five the day after that until it runs out of people. And then when this plan re um, repeats, it's going to do the same thing. So today I'll be calling in 90 days, I'll be calling those same five and then so on and so forth. And then you can choose when you want it to start. So I can start it all out of now, or I would just change my date, stagger it over the next few days. And then that way I'm not calling 20 people. You can leave it as start all now. And then that way, when it shows up as tasks, if you just want to take five people off or whoever you can for the day, the next day, it's just going to mark them as like late, but you'll still have them showing. So it's kind of just up to you. Um, we'll go ahead and confirm. So now you can see kind of what it <coughs> will look like <coughs> Sorry, in your tasks. So I'll call Ann Shaw when I'm done. I'll check it. I can talk about um, kind of what happened with the call. And then I can complete task. It'll take it off. And then in 90 days from now, that same thing is going to pop up.
So any questions about that part? So I was talking about the four things that you can look at um, in the Smart Plans template. So kind of some things you need to decide if they're gonna be good for you. If they're relevant, you can read the description. I would recommend looking at the steps and touches to see, you know, one may have more text messages than emails. You might be wanting to use more emails, especially if you're not using Twilio. I would kind of focus on one that uses emails instead of text. The popularity of the plan and then the validation. So it, they do have approval ratings. Um, the cool thing with smart plans, that is also something that you kind of have to watch for. Anybody can publish one to a library. So you can see your featured ones, top rated. So how long in 2021, you can see it, when it was published. It's been downloaded this many times. It has overall five-star rating. And then these steps, this is just an HTML email. So we can't really see it. You would just kind of have to add yourself to it. Um, so over the edge campaign for KW Metro Center, that might not be something you would want to use because you know we're not KW Metro Center, but you can do things for Halloween. And then you'll find some that are super simple. They're just a Halloween text. If we look at the views of this, this is just sending happy Halloween. Did you put on the costume this year? Keller Williams. You would, you know, you could add this and then you would want to go in and just kind of edit this but you know, 138 downloads. So that one might not be the most popular. Um, but one like this, I know this was big because this one is set up to um, basically get all of your holiday texts ready to go. So it's gonna send a one for Halloween, Thanksgiving, a happy holidays and a New Year's day. And it's already set up with the proper delays to do that. And this tells you the exact days that they're meant to be sent. So the first one, you would just set it to start on October 31st. And then from there, your holiday texts are good to go. And you don't really have to do anything further. Um, other cool options. So search for smart plans. We just kind of went over that. So whatever you're thinking, you can search Halloween. If you're looking for buyer specific ones, search buyer. You have 978 to work with. So really anything kind of goes. So this one is buyer six to nine months out from buying. Um, post buyer closing, 12 month nurture part one for buyer. So they can get really in depth. Um, that's kind of why I would recommend just start with the smaller ones first and kind of get your confidence built up and get really familiar with them before you kind of go into a 15 step smart plan. So will those just, um, remind you of like a task or is that like these ones in particular like texts? They're all different. All right. So if I were to look at, let's go back to the six to eight month. Okay. Six to nine month out. There's 11 steps. If I view the steps, it'll show you exactly what's in it. So there's an interaction text, 14 days. It'll send a text. Okay. And it's more manual. So like, look, if you didn't pay for that, will it just remind you like, to send the text or is that only for yes so if you're not using twilio it's just going to show up as a task okay. and you'll just have to send it yourself it's only downside but this one is all text messages and phone calls so this one has emails phone calls text messages it's really just finding one even if you don't like what these text messages send, I think it's easier to start with a smart plan like this. If you like this one, it looks like a touch every five days and just reworking the text that's actually going out instead of like creating one yourself from scratch. Um, you can create your own smart plan. So going back into my smart plans, I do have the ability to create. So there's some buyer one. I don't think I have one called buyer one. And over here on the left, this is what your plan is going to be. So it's really just adding to, um, adding your actions. These are what you have to work with. So create a task can really be anything. Um, it's just gonna remind you to do that task whatever day it's due. Make a call, send email, um, send text messages, set delay. You can add them to another smart plan within your smart plans. And you can restart the smart plan if it's something you want it to always do. 
Um, so if I wanted to make a call, I can say it's due in however many days. You can call a task name. The only two that are gonna go automatically are the emails. So whatever I put in here, this email is gonna automatically go on the day that it's due. Same with the text message, unless you're not using Twilio, then it will just give you a task to send this text the day of. And then from here, they work the same. You would just save and then add your contacts. Um, there are certain rules. So I would keep, especially if you are creating your own, I would keep an eye on these. Um, it's really just, the main thing is how many touches and how many tasks you're doing per day. So you're not trying to bother people. I think you only um, have, so send email, you have to at least have a one day delay between scheduled email messages. So you're not blowing up their phones. And then the last kind of thing I wanna talk about is trigger tags. This is something really cool if you always want to um, avoid having to manually go in and add new people to smart plans. So you can add contact tag triggers. That means that once I set this as a trigger, anytime I add, tag a contact as that tag, they will automatically be added to the plan. Only things about this, this is going forward. So if they're already, if they already have that tag, they're not going to automatically be added. Um, you have the ability to do up to 10 tag triggers, and this is only to add people to a smart plan. So if you remove the tag from them, it's not going to automatically remove them from the smart plan. So let me go into something I showed a newer agent one time on this bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. It was something that she wanted to use, and she already had a pretty good amount of contacts in her database, but they didn't have the addresses or neighborhoods. So what I did in hers, we went into edit. Contact tag triggers. You can see I already have one that's bought. I can add a new one. And we created one, I believe called, we tagged it as neighborhood. Um, and then she added it, chose the trigger and then saved it. And then from there, she went back into her contacts. The ones that she wanted on this plan, she started adding either neighborhood info or their address, tagged them as neighborhood or whatever her trigger tag was and it automatically added them to this plan. So that was kind of a newer feature that definitely helps a lot because in the past she would have had to go do that in all of her contacts and then come back here and add them all to the smart plan manually. So it definitely saves you a step. Um, if you want to try something like that, I would recommend using the triggers and then going back into your contacts, just making sure they're complete and then tagging them whatever you set here. Just do this first because if I tag everybody as buyer, it's not going to automatically put in my contacts that are tagged as buyer, if that makes sense. Um, and then that is really it. So let me stop my 